Peace, peace. So, this is the blade. We back for a final installment, right? We about to chop it up on this recap of the Cassidy versus Hitman. And uh, I just wanted to come back with uh, not a bar breakdown, but, you know, just a recap, overall assessment, right? So, I'm going to just start off saying, yo, again, I don't, like, I wouldn't think it would be bad if someone said Hitman got the third because, honestly speaking, right, Hitman was more entertaining. I don't feel like I was, like, very entertained by Cass's third. I do, however, feel like I liked most of his angles and how he battled Hitman. I like that a lot better. Um, so let's just start off, right? So round three, Hitman starts off, they boo him early. He tells the story about how he met Cassidy. He's, I mean, I guess you could say he's counterwriting because, you know, Cass came with that angle in the first round talking about, you know, I didn't have time. What do you say? Uh, I know trying to make it in the league is tough. I signed just spoiled and all type of shit. Oh, yeah. Y'all probably hear my background. I'm out here at the park. Check this shit out. Hey. Yeah. The city is alive. The weather got us out. Rest in peace, DMX, man. I, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And then what made me so upset was really people were saying rest in peace before there was really a report released. I'm like, come on, man. Like, when he was in critical condition, it's people on social media talking about rest in peace. Like, stop saying. Oh, my goodness. It's crazy to me how we in an age where information is so easily attainable, but people won't do their due diligence to go get it. That's crazy. Like, never do I want to be the person that opens my mouth about some shit and it's not on point, you know? But anyway, so uh, Hitman tells a story. Uh, so he's kind of like counter writing. He's kind of telling the story from his perspective on how he met Cash 16 years ago. So he had a little scheme. It was it wasn't bad. I, I wasn't mad at it. Um, he was like, uh, he was looking at me with the damn. He killing them face. And he said, uh, some that I he said I, I don't know man I, I'm not quoting the rhyme scheme but I remember the points right and he was talking about that's what I said Cass and I told you I was ready to battle you back then I was dead ass and then he said some other shit I covered the spread fast that was 16 years ago two rounds later and now I, I caught I'm on stage with you I hawked him like the the Metcalf all right you know if I fuck the bar up y'all y'all correct me uh but. You know, it, it, it did his job. You know, he, he rocked the room, so I'm not mad at it, you know. So, I mean, if, if – because, again, it's a it's an argument. So, you know, if if y'all like Cass's angle better on that subject, I feel it. Uh, if y'all like Hitman angle better on that subject, I feel it. Um, as far as the battle go, I just feel like on that particular argument, it's like you could say that Hitman caught up to him, but I, I don't agree. Like – just because y'all battling on the same stage doesn't mean that you you are close to him in status. And that was a large part of Hitman's argument. And I took some notes on that so we can go into that. But, you know, like so often we confuse popularity and hotness with like legendary status and and high accomplishments. Like, come on, man. As popular as Hitman may be, he's nowhere near in the realm of Cassidy is facts. That's not preference. You like you looking at a, a real live living legend. And a lot of cats may not want to say that or may not realize that, but as far as that hip hop shit, as far as that that real what we you know, the the unadulterated, unfiltered, raw hip hop, like that's what cats represent. You know, again, rest in peace DMX, cause you know, somebody else on a on a exit. So, you know, we really got to be all the way uncut with this if we talking about real hip hop because that's a living legend it's it's not too many you know it's not too many so uh anyway like cassidy is is on a higher level than hitman but hitman trying to trying to write the uh prove the argument that you know like nigga i'm on this level if not i'm more popping 
Um, he said some shit about, uh, yeah, you, you got hits, but that don't mean shit to me. Cause I've been on national TV every day for a decade. Um, he said, we channel a different kind of energy. Uh, that setup went bad. I wasn't mad at it. He rocked the room. Um, oh my God. He had a justice league bar. I seen that coming from a mile away, but it was kind of slick because he did incorporate a lot of the, uh, the, um, the heroes in his, uh, in his scheme. He was saying something about, uh, money. I don't even want it. He said, let's not discuss this, please. Cause I, my pockets be on incredible Hulk news flash. I made over 150,000 in just this league. But as soon as he said, discuss, don't discuss this, please. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. He's, he's not a lyrical dude, man. <laughs> That's not, you know, so, you know, I, I feel like Hitman's goal in this battle was to out bar cast. I mean, not out bar cast, out perform cast. And, you know, I feel like Cass stuck to his bars and he added personals. And it was real good how he incorporated it with the round two shit, like with the swear to God. Like, that was good to incorporate that. Wise move. Um, what else? Oh, um, Hitman, I, I don't remember the setup, but he said something about the hustler is an easy problem and I can always count on my hands. And then the crowd gave him that, so he started feeling it. He was like, yeah, yeah. You know how niggas do when they feel like they got something, like when they feel like they got the room. Yeah, you know. Um, oh, but then he comes back with this trash-ass anonymous bar. Like, are you serious? Like, I felt mad for when he went live and he was like, yo, I feel like niggas is rapping to me like I'm stupid. Like, he said, he was like, I feel like you niggas is like, yo, you stupid. <laughs> I'm like, facts, man. Facts. How are you hitting us with anonymous hitman? You cannot be that out of touch. You cannot be that out of touch. You don't think we've heard an anonymous bar. You don't think, and especially the way that you set it up, a non, a miss, come on, man. Ain't no way we that out of touch, bro. So I'm not scoring that. And the crazy shit was the crowd, they liked it. Now I'm not hating, if they like it, they like it, but man, come on, man. You battling Cassidy. You saying anonymous, come on, man. Trash. Uh, he had a gilly angle. He was talking about um, niggas, uh, went on your block and 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 i guess they didn't niggas didn't respect you on your block or some nonsense like that uh if i'm getting the angle wrong y'all correct me down in the comments but cash already addressed it on an angry fan uh interview on caps is live he's like yo y'all didn't even go to my block if you went to my block that'd have been different you talking about my block like that applied to me the cameraman wasn't even in my hood so okay that's his defense true or not i don't know i can't say uh he came with the ar ad uh, he was like, uh, he was like, Cass, and I ain't dissing having an education. He said, he had an angle. He said, you went to the smartest school in Philadelphia, and I ain't dis uh, discrediting your education for keeping your book straight, but A.R. Ab with the jail, you can't even keep the nigga book straight. How do you know that? Come on, man. This is what I be talking about. Niggas just say shit. How do you know? How do you really know? Yes, you've seen stories. You've seen interviews. How do you know? This is the same shit. When he's saying earlier in the, in the first round, you broke, you on coke, uh, you went from uh, saying, uh, you went from singing, come to my hotel to living in, like, come on, man, this is kitty material. Uh, then he had show out, uh, you know, show out came, and uh, I wasn't mad at the bars. Uh, it was a nice little setup. He was like, uh, they said I couldn't bring show in. Then show said. Uh, no, what'd he say? He said, they said I couldn't bring show out. But then show said, okay, they lied then. And then Hitman said, they ain't search me. Show I said, me neither. I got this nine in. <laughs> and uh, he said some other shit like, um, tell Cass to take it outside then. We, we want the tray. You know, niggas, wanna lo niggas love the tray. Don't even know what gun you probably, what's the tray? The 38? It probably is, but you know, niggas don't know. They just adopt the terms. That's how that's how DNA got caught up with that machete shit. 
you know, or maybe he was just freestyling and didn't apply enough thought. I don't know. <laughs> but niggas do it all the time. The Draco. What gun is the fucking Draco? What gun is the Draco? Tell me. So <laughs> show out does the, 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 the performance. And then for some reason it gets crazy because, you know, niggas have to almost always almost fight. And I'm looking at the footage and I'm like, why is it even going that far? Like you can see in the scene when Hitman does the bar show out is like to the left of him, but it's still kind of enough room between show off or show out. My bad. It's still enough room between show out and Cassidy's uh, bodyguards or stage personnel. They look like bodyguards. So. And so with that dis with that distance between them clear, it's still you can still see show out kind of pushing kind of like trying to push past hitman and i'm like what is he doing all that for like you see his body language on camera it's like yeah you know what i'm saying like you know like i'm with the shits okay you feeling the energy you in the vibe okay but he still was pushing and it was like are you trying to take it there you know and like once you see him doing it, then you see the rest of everybody behind him start rushing up more. Like, is it really an issue? So then on the opposite side, you see that many people pushing towards you. Your team might be like, oh, shit, what's what's happening? Yeah. So everybody just trying to be prepared. So they had like a 10 minute, maybe 15 minute delay just because it got derailed, just because his little brother want to do too much. I don't know because I'm not there, but it looked like that from the footage. Y'all tell me otherwise if it looked different from y'all from y'all view, but you know, so that took momentum from Hitman because you know that that remix was all right. I mean, it wasn't crazy to me, but you know, it was all right if your if your point to prove is you're gonna outperform Cassidy. So uh, they do that shit. They get like 10, 15 minutes delay, so it took all the momentum out of the bar. So then Hitman bring it back. Um, and then he goes into uh let me go back to my notes make sure i ain't skipping nothing um okay yeah so then <laughs> he goes into uh oh he had a few moments where he was uh he had the room you know he was talking about uh he said nowadays i can lay out cheddar i like it when the odds are stacked against me it's usually the payout better and you know he had some lines i, I mean i'm not mad at him they weren't really super quotable to me so i didn't write them down i'm gonna be honest with y'all um, there's some shit that Cash said that I didn't write down. I, I, you know, I'm not gonna fake. You know, not all of that shit was hitting. And to be real, um, Hit Hitman got booed a lot early, but Cash got booed a lot later in his third. So the shit was kind of wild. Uh, that's why people feel like how they feel about this battle. They like, you know, it's good, but it's not great. You know, so I feel like we kind of got oversold. But, so, oh, man. So, yeah, the, the bottom of the round, uh, Hitman does the, uh, he, he does a scheme where, you know, he pulls Nick Cannon out. And, um, you know, this, it was a memorable moment. He was like, uh, some, some, you want to know why Nick Cannon don't come to my battles? Bitch, nigga, you can ask him yourself. And brought Nick Cannon out and it was like okay it was a moment because everybody was like ooh you didn't expect Nick Cannon to come out but Nick Cannon goes to the side of the stage and daps him like how did <laughs> how how does this work for you and then Cassidy on point as usual he's in the in the post interview with Caps he like and you brought your boss out. And then he comes across the stage and dap me up. And he talked to me like a boss. And like bosses do. And I saluted that man. And he absolutely right. Like, that's supposed to work for you. Like, otherwise, why is it in your round? It's not effective if everybody go, ooh. I mean, what, what does it say? That you have a, an affiliation with Nick Cannon. We knew that. So, in a battle against Cassidy... How is this effective? Come on, man. That's not effective. He daps him up. And then Cassidy, like, you got Nick Cannon like he a goon. He's supposed to be a goon. And he fat. Like, facts. He, he on stage in all black. He got a ski mask on. Now, I know it's corona season, but he in all black ski mask. Like, if, like, 
That was like 106 and Park level shit against Cassidy to me. Like, he had some moments, but like, what damage? What damage did he do? And that's the question that I always pose, right? Like, if you got Hitman winning, okay. Because it might have been a better show. But what damage are you doing? Even if you didn't set the bar high with the, I'm going to make sure he don't get booked again. Everybody had you going into this with a 3-0. Everybody. So, no, I'm not grading Hitman on a curve. But it's like, for those expectations, plus you saying he's not going to get booked again after you. And then you come with that level. Like, that was not, like, oh, my goodness. That, that was, like, kid jokes. Like, that's some shit somebody that's 21 would really consume like that. Like, he had some moments, but ain't none of that shit verifiable. All of it is, like, rumor shit. And then Catman, this is why I say Cass got it. I ain't mad if people say Hitman got it, but... So we go into uh, Cass's round. He started off controlling the room. You know, he like, that shit was ass. <laughs> like he usually do, right? He like, all right, I'm ready to get the fuck out of here. I'm ready to chew this nigga and wipe the floor with this nigga so we can get the fuck out of here. So he said, uh, he said, nigga, you dis, he said, <laughs> he said, oh, you brought uh, Nick Cannon out. That shit was cool. He said, but why you diss him and them? Yeah, that nigga white, but that nigga nice. <laughs> The way he said it, though. I don't even remember the bar after that. It was just funny. And Cash was doing a, uh, some bars that I felt was okay. They, they're not real memorable to me. But I feel like the angles that he was taking, it was like he, he was solidifying his legendary status. It was like, come on, like, I've been doing this. Like, he was like, I've been this shit way before Daylight decided to take his shit on the stage or some shit like that. And at that point, he was kind of getting love from the crowd and he was kind of getting some booze, you know, so it was kind of mixed in there. Um, <laughs> he said some shit about Nick Cannon. He said, bring your boss back out. And it was like perfect timing because, you know, Hitman just had brought him out. So he like, bring your boss back out, <laughs> you know, because like, what do that do for you? You know, um, he said some shit like... Um, you came, he came, what he say? You supposed to be getting all this money, but you came to the face off and here rock, rocking what? He said, wearing some leggings and some, and some old Jordan shoes. That shit is thrift storable. <laughs> Wasn't even crazy, but it was just like minimizing to Hitman. It was more like putting his hand up against the kid forehead while they swinging. So a kid just doing all this. And you just put your... Like, that's what he was doing. He was big boying him. He was little boying him. Uh, he said, you... <laughs> he was like, I was on Wildin' Out in 05 before the tour with you. Way back when... You, <laughs> what'd he say? When you was letting niggas score on you? <laughs> I've been in the streets when, in a war or two. <laughs> and I just thought it was funny. It was like, when you was letting niggas score on you? Like painting the narrative that like dog you think you a like you think you a competitor here with me but this is not the same level um he had he had a line that deflated hitman to me he said why would a hitman holler they when they move in silence the whole room erupted now check this hitman definitely had more of crowd response more consistent but it's the degree of the line if I say some shit that takes the takes the credibility out of what you do, it's it's the big K Adi Boom. Because Big K Adi Boom was barring. Like lyrically, if you was to put that on paper, you'd be like, hey, I don't I don't think this a blowout. I think Adi was kind of, you know what I mean? But because Big K stripped his credibility right out the gate, it made everything that Adi Boom was saying no. So same thing with this. It's like, how you would hit me? Y'all supposed to be cool. like, you a contradiction. You know, back to round one. You talking about you let niggas out. I'm like, where was I? Like, 
what, what is this ludicrousness I'm hearing? Like, nigga. And that's all because you set that trap for yourself because you allow yourself to be played out of pocket because Cassidy seen that, you know, because you got emotional. And you said, I lay niggas out for a living. You know, if he would have been rational and would have took time and thought before he said that response, he wouldn't have said that silly ass shit that set him up for that bar. You don't lay niggas out for a living. You don't. You are an entertainer. So you made yourself look foolish. That's why niggas got to hold their own. He did that same shit to Arsenal in the face off. And what did Arsenal do? Held his ground, played his position, still talked heavy. He said, Cass, I will beat this shit out of you. Like he got it just as serious as Hitman did, but he didn't get out of pocket. He stayed right where he was. Them niggas talk shit to each other faces like men. After that, it was over. So Hitman opened that window for himself. And so that was the deterrent. I'm gonna be real, without that face off, I don't know. I don't know, man. I ain't saying Cass couldn't have got it, but I don't know, man. That face-off helped, man. Because that was some real Art of War shit, man. Uh, there was other shit in the round. Uh, Cass did have some dry spots. He had some shit about a tequila bar. Like It, it was like... It, it sounded like some shit you probably would have heard in 05. I'm not going to cap. You know what I mean? But the shit with the ball head. If a ball head hit your ball head, that's a triple entendre. You know what I mean? Shit kind of landed. Um, he had some other shit that missed. He had an OnlyFans bar. I'm beating this pussy like an OnlyFans. Like, some people cheer, Some people wouldn't, wouldn't feeling it. I ain't gonna lie, man. Cash really dropped off toward the third. But I feel like the overall narrative was set. And when you that cold was setting the narrative, like, you know, what can you say, man? So... I mean, overall, for real, I got cast 2-1, 2-1, you know, if y'all want to say Hitman 2-1, I ain't mad, Hitman 3-0, I can't see, cast 3-0, that's a stretch, uh, I got cast though, y'all let me know what y'all think, Bo.